I'm Isaac Hernandez. And I'm Holly McClure. And this is Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. Holly, welcome back. Thank you. I know. I kind of missed out on a couple of these, didn't I? <laughs> you have. And uh, I got to tell you, yes. I, I, don't, I don't like flying solo anymore. I, I got spoiled. <laughs> I miss being with Alex and Stephen Kendrick, but that was a great interview. I love that. Was uh, yeah, I, I definitely wish you would have been here for that. But I, I know you suddenly got called on a special assignment, and so uh, I had to fly yeah. solo. But uh, I, I did the best I could. Well, for those of you who haven't seen that interview, you should go to Faith on Film TV on YouTube or wherever you watch us, and go see that and check it out. It's a great show, and they've got an amazing film coming up. So yes, we'll have yes. uh, more to talk about that in September. Yes, they do. And you know what? We have a lot of great shows coming up, actually. Uh, we're going to uh, do a, a whole series, actually, on, on The Chosen, because that's one of the things that you've been doing that's kept you so busy. Also, you went to uh, the, the new right. studios of The Chosen, didn't you? That's right, I did. And we'll be talking about that more later in the show today. Got some yes. interesting information for you. You don't want to miss out. But we've also got a special guest that kind of has something to do with The Chosen, because... He actually has been on the place where the first season one and part of three was filmed. Uh -huh. So why don't you introduce our guest? Sure. Well, Tim Shields uh, is the founder of CMA's content conferences. He's been the co-director of Christian media conferences for many years. Uh, he has made the mantle. He has the mantle of media on his life. We're going to have to find out what that exactly what that means. Uh, he is passionate about Jesus, his faith, his family, and has been in pastoral work for many years. Uh, Tim, welcome to Faith on Film, my friend. Thank you very much, Isaac, Holly. God bless you. Nice to be here. Well, uh, first thing is uh, maybe you can explain to us uh, what you, well, it says here uh, that you were a pastor. Uh, does that mean, but it says you were in pastoral work. What does that mean? Did, were, did you have a church or how did you even get started in media? How did you go from pastoring? I'm already asking too many questions. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, it's all good. That's great, Isaac. Um, no worries. Uh, what I did was is that uh, many years ago, my pastor came to me and said, hey, uh, we'd love for you to lead up our TV ministry. And I had no background in TV or media at the time. And so I agreed. And uh, the rest is history. That was 38 years ago. Um, and media has just followed me wherever I go. And so the doors open up for me just because the Lord's mantle is on my life to work in the area of media. Now, as far as pastoral, um, I did go to Bible school and graduated from Bible school. And, um, and then just in the course of time, became part of the pastoral staff of church, of a couple of churches. Then I was an associate pastor, children's pastor, evangelism pastor, outreach pastor. Uh, and then I was a senior pastor of a church for a couple of years. Um, and just have filled uh, different pastoral roles. I love it, enjoy it. It's just the love of my life to do that. And I've mixed the media mantle and the pastoral mantle together. And now, mm -hmm. you know, what I do for a living uh, partly is, is that I lead up and plan. I'm the chief servant for the content media conferences and also at, at uh, Capernaum Studios, um, of the pastor and uh, the HR manager. So those two kind of work together hand in hand. I uh, see. Do you ever feel like you may want to just go back to actually pastoring a church? No, I would love to. If somebody offered oh, really? me to, I might take it. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, don't offer it to me. I might take it. You actually get to pastor, though, people in a way. I mean, you have a ministry with Christian film and media, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it is true. Um, I love uh, being part of the pastoral, uh, of course, the Capernaum staff, where I'm uh, the pastor on staff there. And it's just a pleasure and a joy. And yes, you do. You get to help people, counsel them, advise them, pray for them, teach them. It's wonderful. It's just, it's just great being alive and doing the work of the Lord. You know, I also am a, or have been a, a pastor at a, at a church uh, and to be honest with you i never wanted to do that I, I never wanted to be a pastor it wasn't my calling i felt uh, but especially because i always felt pastors well their thing was to preach and i'm like i'm not a preacher i, I just i can't do that but now i've embraced it because i kind of mixed just like you did i mixed media and pastoring together uh, because if there's one area that people in the film industry need is is uh 
well, two areas really. They need a lot of encouragement and they need a lot of protection. And I feel like those two parts of a pastoral uh, personality is, is at least what I get mostly involved with. Um, I, I don't teach, uh, unlike you, I, I, just, I just encourage people. No, that's good. That's good, Isaac. So now, tell us a little bit about, uh, I mentioned that, of course, you uh, were the co-director of the Christian Media Conferences, and uh, every year I've attended, I think, all but one of your conferences. Uh, in this case, it'll be Conference 2022. Um, and by the way, if you're watching this program after September 15th, of course, it'll already be passed, but you still want to know all about it because there's another one next year that will be Content 23. Uh, but tell us a little bit about Content 2022, or really the content conferences, and uh, why you started those, and uh, what can people expect? Yeah, sure. We started them uh, years ago. We had uh, we have been doing we so a lot of small conferences in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I say conferences, actually, a lot of small meetings. We'd have 50, 75, 100 people on average on a Monday night. Uh, we did that for several years, just gathering filmmakers, those in the industry television communicators and there was no charge for it we just gathered them in the evening at a uh, facility and we all networked and so many people showed up that after several years we decided that uh we must uh, maybe we should pray about making this into a, a conference and so it wasn't our like focus to uh to do, be a national conference at the time but it was a focus to help the dallas fort worth area and the surrounding areas in the area of media and so we started in 2014 and it's just grown and uh, as far as to be in a national conference and we're so um you know excited about it and happy about it now what it does is that what it addresses is just all the areas of um filmmaking like uh, from filmmaking 101 to screenwriting to directing and producing marketing distributing and uh, acting so We'll have all those uh, those people attend, also even young filmmakers that are just beginning. So it's just an amazing place to come because what we do is we build our conferences on three things. We build them on building community. So we're really big on building community. If we're not building community, then we scrap whatever session or format we did have, and we're gonna find out how we're gonna build community. Uh, we, want, we want everyone who attends to, to leave with a family. And so then secondly, we want there to be a, a spiritual explosion in somebody's life. We want them really encounter and hear from the Lord uh, with their media projects. And that's just really big. You know, whenever you're doing media, you've got to hear from the Lord. And number three, we, uh, we want to give people a promotion and exposure. So we're doing our best to help people catapult them into the future. And, uh, you know, we have in 2021 and 2022, we've had two conferences per year, one every six months. So close to a thousand people or over a thousand people have attended uh, because that's four conferences, including the one here in a couple of weeks. And so that's what we've been doing, bro. Wow. Has it been, um, is this just, is this a conference for just people who've already made a movie and are already in the business to just further find distributorships or are this for people that haven't even done a movie, but they're thinking about it? Is this encompassing mm -hmm. everyone? Yeah. Thanks for the question. Holly. That's a great question. It is for everyone. Um, we have a special young filmmakers track and a special uh, beginners filmmakers track that's going on. It is for those who are thinking about making a movie or short film or documentary or trailer or music video or sizzle reel or an actor's demo reel. This is for actors and screenwriters and producers, directors, beginners, intermediate and advanced. Uh, if you attend, you'll be able to meet people in the industry that have been there for many years and you'll meet people that are just beginning. And so I also, I was, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was also no, gonna no, say, no. It's, it's interesting that you can be at Capernaum because they get to come to an actual movie studio and see an actual movie studio and how it operates and how it runs while they're at the conference, which most people, you know, who are just getting in the business haven't really ever done that. Oh, that's absolutely. That's why we, we um, have them at Capernaum Studios. This is our sixth one at Capernaum Studios since 2018. We just feel that if people get away, come to Capernaum Studios, which is on um, a large ranch. And so we have 40 acres there, our studios, and uh, it feels like a getaway. And, and many people, when they come on the grounds, uh, say they sense the spirit of God, the presence of God there. And um, it is exciting. If you're a filmmaker, 
and uh, you're one to get inspired, then I would say come to our content conferences, um, especially when we have them at Capernaum Studios because you'll be able to see all the sets, you'll be inspired, and you'll be able to really hear from the Lord uh, because that's the environment that we uh, have formatted the conference in. So it is, it's special, it's a very special holiday to be at Capernaum Studios. Matter of fact, if anybody wants to do a short film or feature or doc at, mm -hmm. at Capernaum Studios, they should go to CapernaumStudios.com. They're great people to work with, amazing people, and they love Jesus. Now, Tim, would you say that maybe somebody who's not involved necessarily as a film producer, director, writer, actor, but maybe is interested in the whole concept of Christian filmmaking and perhaps even just wants to get to know people that are involved in it, uh, would they benefit from coming to this conference as well? Yeah, they would, because sometimes, you know, when we, when we want to get into filmmaking, we're not sure of what area we want to get involved in. We, we might say, well, we want to make a movie or we want to do um, a documentary, we want to do a short film, but we're not sure if we're the producer, we're not sure if we're the director, we're not sure if we're the screenwriter, we're not sure if we're just the person that's cheering them on, maybe even the pastor that try to just get them together and encourage them. So sometimes you got to get your feet wet, come to this conference or other conferences, and then go to some of the classes, uh, maybe even um, be on set for some of the films being done so you understand where you fit, what's best for you, what you feel will be right for you. and. Um, so that's a good good question, Isaac. Uh, oh, I was going to say, I also heard that you guys are going to have a pitch fest so that people can <laughs> actually pitch their projects in hopes of getting it picked up or distributed on a network or by you know, a distributor or someone like that, which, again, that's a great asset when you have something like a conference like that where people can actually pitch their work. Absolutely. We do have Pitchathon on Thursday in the afternoon to several um, networks. And also, not only Pitch Fest, but we also have a thing where you pitch to be a guest on a show. So the Pitch Fest to pitch your completed content is called Pitchathon, and the uh, the Pitch Fest where you are pitching to be a guest on a show is called Catalyst. So if you go to our website ChristianMediaConference.com and then go under Program and click on Pitchathon or Catalyst, you'll be able to check out those things. Now, Tim, there's a challenge that I want to throw out right now, because yes, if there's one thing that I have noticed at not only content conferences, but really a lot of the conferences that I go to, is that there's very little involvement or attendance from church ministries. I, I don't see pastors there. Uh, I don't see church media people there. I see a lot of, you know, independent filmmakers. Uh, but I did invite a uh, media pastor on the last content conference that you held. And uh, he pointed that out and he was amazed, you know, and uh, I'm thinking we need to challenge the churches out there that they really should also send their media people to learn more and to connect more. Uh, am, am, I, uh, am I off on that? No, not at all. Actually, believe it or not, uh, the first many, many years of our ministry from 1992 to about 2005, mm -hmm. we produced content. We sold it to thousands of churches nationwide because churches just weren't doing that. And we taught them through an association and through a publication, how to use media in their churches. And, um, but I think you're right, Isaac. Um, I, I think that has been a concern of mine also. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been a dampering of that because of COVID. When COVID hit, a lot of the churches just held back. And so, but for us, uh, for 2023, we've got some great announcements coming up. We're going to mm -hmm. catapult and try to get as many churches as we can involved mm -hmm. in media. So uh, we are going to focus on that for our next conference in 2023 to help expand that. It's a good uh, point. That's great to hear. Great One to hear. of the um, probably more famous people who was in a church and in their entertainment or film, church film, you know, department of the church, who then came out of it is Dallas Jenkins who is now directing right. The Chosen. He started off with, not started off, but was in a church ministry. He actually had a career before that. 
went into the church, made a film, but really helped them raise up their level of film production. Mm -hmm. So uh, you never know who's going to be birthed coming out of churches and what that's great right. things they're going to do. Well, you know? that's true. That's so true, Holly, because he did create the shepherd out of that church. And then um, out of that, out of that uh, small, uh, I guess, series there, or that short film he had done, was Birth the Chosen. That's right. And uh, he would have never known. It, it just would be, yeah. he, I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. Dallas would tell you that he did not think that was gonna happen, and it did, and it just took off. And speaking of, people that come to the conference will be able to be on the Chosen set where season one was filmed, right. won't they? Absolutely, I've been there so many times, and you know I'll be going there again today because that's where I work. I do work at Capernaum <laughs> Studios on staff, and yes, yeah, season one was filmed there, um, and uh, parts of season two, and many parts of season three. And so, so people be able will be able to visit and go, and you're going to actually have some surprise, fun things going on in the village itself. Yes, in the Capernaum Village set where where the chosen filmed a lot of their. Uh, scenes for season one. Absolutely. You'll be able to take pictures by the iconic Matthew tax collector's office and many of the other places. It's it's great to be there. It really is. You know, Isaac, if you let me yeah. just real quickly, I want to, while I'm thinking of it, you know, Tim, um, I think one of the uh, unique things about where you work is that the CEO and founder, Tammy Lane, a woman founded this movie studio, Capernaum Studios, and she runs it, and she it produces and directs her own film. If that's not an inspiration to women wanting to attend this mm -hmm. conference, to see a living example of a woman who not only is producing and directing her own things, but literally started a movie studio, and I looked it up, and this is ironic. There's one other woman that I can find in the U.S. who owns a studio, and her name is Tammy. And she lives in Georgia, and she's got $135 million. She's a, an African-American woman there. But they're both named Tammy. What, is it, how, what are the odds of that? Wow. <laughs> but, I mean, I that's an awesome. example. You've got right there at Capernaum of a woman who's doing it all. So, you know, I think that should be inspirational for women thinking about coming to this conference and, oh, what can I do? Well, there's a lot. Absolutely. And they could come. They could meet Tammy and talk to Tammy about how she got started and be inspired by her. So she'll be there. And she'll she'll want to meet anybody who wants to come, and uh, I do believe her story is a very inspirational, and it's a, it's a great role model. That's great. That's wonderful. Well, Tim, again, uh, if people want to learn more about not only this one, but again, if they're seeing the program next year, because that's the thing is this program lives on forever. Um, where would they go to to get more information? Sure, they just go to our website, ChristianMediaConference.com. Again, that's ChristianMediaConference.com, and the buttons should be right there. Um, I don't know when they'll be watching this, but mm -hmm. the, it should be just, it'll work. It'll be easy to understand uh, the program and what we have to offer. So that's where they need to go. And if they have any questions, you just hit on the contact button, and we'll answer them right away. Excellent. And Isaac, you're going to be there too, right? I sure am. In fact, Tim never mentioned that, uh, you know, there was going to be a great worship time there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, there is. A <laughs> great worship leader is Isaac. Boy, he is great. And wow. If you, and if you can't that. imagine Isaac worshiping, well, go to this conference and you'll have a chance to <laughs> That's right. and see him at his best. It's amazing, That's, isn't it? That's right. That is so true. So, well, good. Uh, Tim, I know that you've been very busy putting this conference together and, and in the next couple of weeks so you're going to be even busier. Uh, so, But I do appreciate you taking a little time to just come and share it with us, all right? Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thanks, Tim. You Thank bet. you. Folks, Thanks, Holly. Okay, bye-bye. There will be more Faith on Film coming up. Are you okay with people knowing that you're adopted? Yes. Mostly. Not really. Do you remember asking to see that when you were about eight years old? How old were they? I think she was 18. And he was 17. I honestly had no idea that this many people were wanting to adopt. Imagine how scared she must have been. She was pregnant when she graduated. And then the decision to place you for adoption. God, if you're there, please protect him and watch over him. There's a birth mother on the line with a question for you. It must have been the hardest decision of her entire life. Hello? But she loved you. And I'm so glad that she made the choice that she did. I've 
always wondered if my biological parents think about me. Today is David's 18th birthday. You want to talk to him? I don't think he'd want to talk to me. There's only one way to find out. I guess maybe I didn't want to feel different. You didn't want to be an idiot. No, I didn't want to be different. Different. Okay, good. That's a lot better. God gave you to me and mom as a gift. And you will always be our son. Is that your birth mom? She wants to meet. Really? Yeah. This is huge! Hey, what's up, Emily? How's it going? That's Elizabeth. Welcome back. What you just saw, of course, was the trailer to Life Mark, a movie that will be releasing in theater September 9th. If you want to know more about it, just go to lifemarkmovie.com. That's lifemarkmovie.com. Holly, you missed that interview. I'm officially <laughs> bummed. <laughs> I'm really, is that, I'll use the old phrase we used to use, I'm bummed out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't believe I missed that interview. I'm so sad because that was actually... I love those yeah. guys. I love those guys. I like. I never forget. You know, yeah. Alex coming up to me at NRB and going, "I have a small little film I want you to see. Can you have Paul Junior, <laughs> Paul Kurt Junior, watch it?" And you know, facing the giants, small little yes. film. I anyway, so I've remember. been their biggest fan since day one. But yeah. um, I'll tell you another thing I'm a big fan of is the Chosen series. And you see, you missed uh, being with the Kendricks, but you were not exactly out suffering for Jesus, were you? Got a chance to go kind of, I was this close to meeting Jesus, this close, <laughs> this close. But Jesus had to go to Rome. He had, a, he had, a, he had an event there in Rome. Go to so Rome. so yeah. well, t tell us, well, what were you doing there? Well, they had, um, I represented Faith on Film, and we um, got a chance to go see in Midlothian, Texas, and that's south of Dallas. And it, they're on this property that is an amazing property. Um, it is a ranch for the um, Salvation Army. And let's, I think it is the Salvation Army camp is what it is, sorry. And during COVID, they had nobody come to their camp. And so they were about to go up under. Well, Dallas and Chad Gunderson and several of the partners found this property and it is an amazing site with a lake and they have built uh, literally Capernaum there, Jerusalem there, they have a temple. So they invited us to go as press to tour the set to see what's coming because, drum roll, brrr, and I'll have more on this later, <laughs> they are going to launch season three in a movie mm -hmm. theater on November the 18th, episodes one and two. And this is huge because for those of you who are like, I just can't get my family to watch The Chosen. I just can't get my friends to watch it. I just can't get them. Well, you'll take them to a movie theater now and they'll be able to watch two hours and uh, the feeding of the 5,000, which actually they had 12,000 people over four days <laughs> come to wow. feed it. So the feeding uh, of the 12,000 is what took the place. 12, which Dallas officially said was the hardest thing he's ever done. So I got to go as press representing Faith on uh -huh. Film. We got to tour. We got to, to the whole facilities. I got my own camera guy following me. So I'm going to have amazing footage for us wow. to see. You're going to get a first look at the actual studio. And you're also going to see where they have the new temple. And uh, they explain about how the temple's being built. What's with that? They have the Garden of Gethsemane. They're putting in olive mm -hmm. trees in this garden to have a whole Garden of Gethsemane. They replicated the village from Capernaum Studios, where they filmed part of season one mm -hmm. and three. They took that and put that over on their set so that they could still continue some of the houses and places and right. things that happened. Anyway, it it is going to blow your mind. It is amazing, a gorgeous set. And what I was encouraged to find out was how amazing and friendly all the actors. I got to meet Mary Magdalene, for those of you who don't know the, the names, but um, you know Liz, uh, Liz Tabouche, she's Mary, plays Mary Magdalene, and uh, several of the other actors got to interview them. And they have such sweethearts there, and it's such an amazing place. And the question I found interesting most was, is there going to be anything beyond? I mean, we all know how it ends, right? The New Testament. We kind of know how it ends with Jesus, and we right, yeah. Know the end of that story. It's sort happens. of, it's sort of like Titanic, right? We knew how that was going to end. We already know how this is going to end. <laughs> it's not going to end well. Well, it, at first it doesn't, and then it does. And uh, so I asked the writers, you know, the two guys that were writers, which 
which is the season you're most concerned about or worry about? And one of them said season six, you know, the crucifixion. And one said season seven afterwards and what happens after right. the grave. So it's going to be interesting to see how those are handled. But interesting news also, it's going to go beyond the chosen. They're going to do something for children. They have mm. other I, projects and ideas in mind. So for those of you who are big fans, you've got several more years to come even after the Chosen series because they're not going to stop right. there. They have more planned. Well, and, and technically, the story didn't end there. The story, in essence, really began there, didn't it? It, it began at the crucifixion uh, right. because the story is about the Chosen. So it's really about those people that followed him and took his message and really you know, took it to the, uh, the ends of the earth. So, uh, yeah, I can see how there can be a, a whole lot more still because a lot happened. Uh, if you read the book of Acts, a lot happened after the crucifixion, didn't it? Well, it did. And, you know, Jesus appeared to the 500 plus, you know, as well as the, as Peter, the disciples. I mean, we all know that after the grave, that's where he gave Peter a chance to, yeah. when Peter denied him three times, he gave chance to Peter, for Peter to say, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, three times. Yeah. and. And renounce that so there's yes there is a lot of things lot that happen so that'll be probably season seven pretty sure Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and then like i said as for children and i love that nice. their heart is to minister to the younger generation they they're really passionate about reaching the gen zers and the young generation who won't go to church haven't gone to church don't know the yeah. bible don't know the word and uh that's my heart too and i know it's yours too as well yes well it's exciting that we're going to actually do several shows because you've got so much material we cannot possibly cover it in one show. So we're going to be doing Great. a whole, I don't know, two, three, whatever yes. shows, whatever amount of shows it takes to cover everything, right? Right, and to let people see what's yes. going on and get excited about it. And, and I think it's, it's, you want to get excited about it so you can tell others, because yes. this is something that's free to watch, big concept right. there, and, um, mm -hmm. and fun. It's a, it's a fun yeah. way to look at the Bible, as well as an informational way. Jesus yeah. is real, and I love it that these people are real. It's, it's, so many people have been touched by it. Well, Holly, it was exciting having you back today. Uh, I, I, I don't, again, I don't, I don't like being alone anymore. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm glad you're I love being with you back. guys. Thank you. Uh, folks, don't forget, you can write us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Faith on Film TV. Now, we want to actually encourage you to do something else, and that is to go to our YouTube channel and Please. not only watch the shows, but hit that little subscribe button. We really want to try to get that subscription number, that subscription base uh, elevated. So just hit that little subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, right? Right. Just Holly? The finger the button. Yep. That's right. Please do that. We really appreciate it. And again, if you have any questions, comments, if there's anything you want to ask about my tour of the chosen set, mm -hmm. um, go ahead and email us at uh, faithonfilmontv at gmail.com, right? faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Did I say it right? Yeah. At gmail. yeah. Good enough. <laughs> and, and ask any questions you want. We, we love to hear yes. from you guys and more than happy to answer your questions. So thanks again, Isaac. It's great being back with you. All righty, folks. See you next week.